Qualified business income deduction problem one. Artichoke, a single individual, operates a service business that earned $110,000 during the tax year. The business has no tangible property and paid no W-2 wages. Compute Artichoke's qualified business income or QBI deduction, assuming his overall taxable income before QBI is $125,000. So this problem is dealing with the QBI deduction, the Qualified Business Income Deduction. Now the QBI deduction came into play in 2018 as a result of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017. The idea is that before 2018, C corporations were taxed upwards of 35%. That's the highest rate, okay, progressive rate system. And starting in 2018, and there's been changes over time, but in 2018, the corporate tax rate was lowered to 21%, was a highest rate, a flat rate of 21%. Now, the ordinary rates for individuals on ordinary income were upwards of 37%. So there was an advantage of being a C corporation being taxed at 21% rather than being a flow through like a sole proprietorship or a partnership or an S corporation where you would be taxed on the same income at 37% of its ordinary business income. Now, of course, C corporations have double taxation as well, and we'll learn more about that in a later video. But the idea there is that if you can avoid the second level of tax, either um, by not paying out distributions or retaining your earnings, um, same idea, then you can try to uh, avoid the second level of tax. There's ways to do that through planning. So the QBI deduction was basically put in place by Congress, understanding that, okay, there's a lower tax rate for C corporations. Individuals have higher rates with the 37% ordinary income rate. So to provide an incentive for these businesses other than C corp. So this is business activity other than C corporations qualify for this qualified business income deduction. Okay, business activity other than C corporations. Again, because C corporation activity is not qualified because again, this whole provision was put in place because of the benefit that C corporations had of a lower tax rate. Okay, and the benefit really is, the most you can get is you take QBI, qualified business income, times 20% and that creates a deduction that a taxpayer gets and that deduction, that deduction is a below the line deduction which, but it's not subject to the um, the uh, the itemized deductions versus standard deduction issue. It's a below the line deduction, meaning that it's below AGI, okay? But it stands alone. So basically, it's a deduction that you get on these returns um, for an individual owner. If they own, it can be more than just an individual owner. But usually, we see it where individual owners own a um, sole proprietorship, partnership, S corporation. Here we've got Artichoke, a single individual. And Artichoke owns a, um, a service business. We're not specifically told what it is. And if you're not told what kind of business it is, then we assume it's a sole proprietorship. That's the idea in the law. If it's not set up, then it'll be a sole proprietorship. So that does qualify here. Now, there are limits. There are lots of limits out there on the QBI deduction that can be taken. Okay. And the main limit that you should definitely know is that when it was originally enacted for single, for all taxpayers, other than married, for all taxpayers other than married filing joint, other than married filing joint, the limit where a limitation started to apply was if your taxable income, your TI or taxable income was greater than or equal to $157,500. Once you got $157,500 or more, then you were limited in terms of the amount based on your taxable income. For married filing joint, it was when you got to a taxable income amount of greater than or equal to $315,000. So here, our taxpayer has um, taxable income, and this taxable income limit is before you consider the QBI is $125,000. So we're not subject to any limits. So this is going to be pretty simple, this example. And if you're taking my class, I keep you know questions on the exam very simple as well. But if you're taking the CPA exam or another class, you make sure that you understand the limits, the taxable income limits, those types of things as well. But for my class, I keep it simple. All you do is you take the QBI, which here is 110,000. It's the amount of business income during the year. So the service business earned $110,000 of business income during the year. So the QBI here is $110,000. 
we multiply that by 20%, okay, and that number, that's going to equal $22,000. Get your calculators out and calculate, okay, $22,000, and that is the amount of the deduction. So the question is asking compute artichokes qualified business income deduction. It's going to be $22,000 is the answer. Now, a few things before we conclude the problem. Remember, you've got these taxable income limits. Now, these numbers are inflation adjusted. So in the future, there'll actually be more. So in my exams, my questions, I try to stay under um, the amounts. So you need to understand a few things. We take the amount not by taxable income. We do not multiply 125,000 times 20%. We take the amount of business income because we're told the service business, it operated and it generated $110,000 of business income during the year. So we use that number. You also need to use, you multiply 20%. You need to know that number. So if you're taking my class, you're not going to be given that number CPA exam. You're not given 20% either. The idea there is you need to understand that 20% number. So the answer here is 22,000 and we are done with this one. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Just keep in mind the percentages and what you're multiplying by.